Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Leo. I'm an animal care specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo. And I'm here to introduce you to two of our slots. We currently have two slots here at the San Antonio Zoo. They're the Lynn's uh, two-toed slots. And uh, they're stuck over here at the Tiny Tot Nature Spot, a uh, nice quiet corner of the zoo. They're typically sleeping uh, this time of day because they are nocturnal. But they uh, noticed me walk in with one of their favorite treats and they love apples. So let me introduce you to the sloth here that I'm about to feed. This is Leona. As you can see, she's grabbing it with her claws are typically about four inches long. Leona was born here at the San Antonio Zoo. She is nine years old. She was born in December. Uh, she's probably the only sloth to be born here in at least the last 30 years. Her, um, her mother and father lived here. They had a couple of sloth babies that didn't make it. Uh, but we, the mother was not producing any milk. So we decided to hand raise Leona. We pulled her and uh, she's a survivor. Over here to the right of Leona is Javari. He's the male. Now Javari came to us from the Texas Zoo in Victoria. He is, actually he had a birthday Sunday. He turned 27 years old. It's pretty old, but uh, sloths typically live to be almost 40. They can they have a lifespan of 20 to 40 years old. Uh, they spend, uh, as you can see, they're ideally suited for just hanging on trees. They hang upside down. They, they actually do everything upside down except poop. That's the only time you'll ever see a sloth come down. They are arboreal. They hang out in trees. Uh, they mate in trees and they actually give birth up in the trees. They were considered the world's slowest mammal. They can cover about 10 feet. Uh, it takes them about a minute to get 10 feet, so <laughs> they are slow. Uh, they're primarily uh, herbivorous. Uh, however, Lynn's, uh, I've been known to eat insects. Uh, here at the zoo, they have a, a great diet. Uh, it's varied. It has some fruits and it has vegetables. They love lettuce and uh, they do browse on the leaves that are uh, surrounding them here. I occasionally give them banana leaves. Uh, I'll, I'll hang them up uh, for enrichment and uh, etc. So as you can see they have a very very thick coat of hair and this is ideal for them because uh, they, they're rainforest mammals. Uh, the rainforest uh, very very uh, wet, it rains, uh, so it protects them. Um, you'll never see a sloth this pretty in the wild. They're usually covered with algae. Algae and it makes them, gives them an, a nice uh, green color. As I mentioned earlier, the only time they come down from the trees is to poop, and they do that maybe once a week. It typically takes them anywhere from eight to ten hours to digest whatever they've, they've eaten. A, a fun fact uh, for sloths is that they're, uh, they're very clumsy when they're on the ground. However, they're actually good swimmers. Their front legs are longer than their hind legs, and uh, They've been uh, known to, to be very uh, good swimmers, uh, especially when the rainforest floods. Let's see. I'm trying to think of some interesting things. <laughs> well, while he's out, can we talk about the other animal that's in this habitat? Absolutely. We do have a uh, nine-banded armadillo in here. This see, did he go back into his cubby hole? Yeah. Okay. This is Mick Jagger. He's our nine banded armadillo. He is also nine years old and he was born here at the San Antonio Zoo. They're very popular, especially people that aren't from the south because uh they're on, they're not their range uh, 
actually the range is extended now it's they've been found as far north as Nebraska but uh, out of the 20 species of armadillo the the nine band is it is the only one outside of uh, South uh, South America they're actually the official uh, mammal of Texas they spend their days uh, burrowing and uh, digging for insects actually they are nocturnal he's uh, he gets a, a wild hair every now and then and come out and start digging for bugs. They have this bony plate uh, that makes them very look very prehistoric. Bony plated armor uh, protects them. Um, however, um, they are still predated on in the wild by uh, jaguars and uh, other felids. Armadillos typically live, nine bandits anyway, uh, can live to be uh, up to 17 years old, 9 to 17, not as long in the wild. Many people's first encounter with nine banded armadillos here in Texas, unfortunately, is on the side of the road. Um, they are a victim of roadkill. They have this unusual behavior when they're startled, they jump about four, one to four feet high which is about bumper level. He's constantly burrowing for insects. So. Sloths, uh, actually, and armadillos are not endangered. Uh, sloths are, uh, right now, probably the biggest factor for the demise of sloths and lo a lot of mammals in the rainforest is uh, fragmentation, uh, human encroachment. We're losing our rainforest uh, at a very, very uh, poor rate. Uh, so uh, they need trees to live in. All right, back, back to our slow mammals. All right, let's see if he wants another apple. Hey, Jabari. They are part of the trade, the, the pet trade, which is unfortunate. And uh, Leona over here, her her mother and father actually were rescued from uh, the, the pet trade in Guyana in northern uh, South America. And they brought uh, Bonita and Sid to, to live here. And uh, they're not aggressive at all. However, they have a very powerful bite if need be. And they do have vocalization, which is very rarely here they do have a hiss um, the females are the ones that actually initiate the breeding um, they'll, they'll make a vocal they'll call out and vocalize and, and call um, the males so they're typically solitary mammals uh, they spend uh, the majority of their lives by themselves only only coming together uh, when it's time to breed Well, here it's easy because Leona has still has color in her fur. <laughs> She's younger. Javari, he's uh, he's up in age now, and he's he used to be a little darker when he first got here. Other than that, it's <laughs> very difficult if you um, if you're not familiar with them. Can sloths swim? They actually can. They're very good swimmers. They have these long arms, longer than their hind legs, and uh, they, they've been known to uh, get across the streams and rivers. Makes them vulnerable, though. Uh, caimans and, and harpy eagles and, and uh, jaguars will predate on them in the wild. Leo, how long have you wor worked at the zoo? Holy cow. <laughs> Well, I started in 1995, and I was here for almost six years, and I thought I would be happy doing something else, and I wasn't, so I came back, but uh, cumulatively, I've been here uh, 21 years and six months. <laughs> I really love my job, otherwise I wouldn't have stayed here this long. Um, I can't think of doing anything else. Um, Jennifer says that 
this week, uh, learning at home, her daughter, Kara, who's six years old, is learning about adaptation. What are some physical or behavioral ab adaptations that sloths have that help them to survive in their environment? Well, I mean, uh, just the fact that they're here in, in San Antonio, which is north of, of, uh, of their uh, native area, which is uh, South America, uh, they've been able to adapt uh, to our, uh, our, you know, it's it's not always wet here. Uh, it's sometimes it can be dry. Uh, so, as typical mammals, they they will climatize and uh, they'll get used to uh, our weather. Um, that's probably the main thing. They don't like it to be very cold. We do have. Uh, protocols in the winter. I mean, if it gets below a certain temperature, uh, we'll have to put them inside until it warms up. And luckily here in San Antonio, we don't have very cold winters, so they spend the majority of their, of their time outside. And the same goes for the armadillos. They, they're the ones that have adapted probably a lot faster than a lot of animals. They, they made it as far north as Missouri and Nebraska. Uh, they don't like the cold, but they've adapted. And I think climate change has a lot to do with it as well. Our climate is warming up, so it's uh, making it easier for them to, to live uh, in places that you would n uh, not typically see uh, armadillos uh, even 20 years ago. Is it true that their stomachs are upside down so that they can eat upside it, down? Uh, they have a four-chambered stomach. Um, it, it, it's actually right where it's supposed to be. Uh, it makes it easy for them to, to, to eat and digest. But, um. All right, we've got a bunch of questions. All right. Uh, first, can you tell us again what kind of sloth this is? These are Lynn's two-toed sloths. And are there different types of sloths? There are. There's actually several s different species. Um, there's three-toed sloths. Actually, three-toed and two-toed sl two sloths. Uh, there's uh, a highly endangered uh, pygmy sloth, which is only found on an island off of Panama. Uh, there's Hoffman's sloth. Um, but uh, the lens are probably the bigger of the species. Uh, they are lighter, though. Uh, typically like to live in high in the canopy in the rainforest. They weigh between, I don't know, let's see, anywhere from 12 to 19 pounds. About half of that is hair. How old are these sloths? Javari turned 27 on uh, Sunday, and Leona is nine years old. She'll be 10 in December. Do these sloths and armadillos get along with each other? They do. I mean, for the most part, uh, the sloths are up in the tree most of the day, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they don't really, ra they rarely, c they only come down to poop, as I said earlier. Um, the dillos pretty much are, are just minding their own business, uh, burrowing and, and digging and rooting up uh, bugs. Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get their, their food. You can see what I've, what I feed them typically in a day, and I'll put it right there. They get a good variety of food, and we give them lettuce and bananas and tomatoes and grapes, green beans and broccoli. Can we see what you're feeding? Sure. They get um, lettuce and broccoli and cucumbers and sweet potatoes, grapes, and this compressed uh, food that has a lot of their minerals and vitamins in it. I think they're ready to eat. Yes, we do. <laughs> I got this idea from a keeper a long time ago, and uh, we just improved on it a little bit. They love they love to sleep in the hammocks. They'll even sleep in milk crates. How can you tell the difference between a two-toed and a three-toed sloth? Um, well. 
The two-toed has two claws on the front, and the three-toed sloth has three in the front. They all, all sloths have three, three claws on the back. And do they come down to the ground to go to the bathroom? They come down about once a week. And sometimes that all depends on how much they've eaten as well. So it takes a long time for them to metabolize their food, so it could be up to 10 to 12 hours after they finish a meal for them to, to metabolize everything. So it's typically about once a week. You can see their hair grows from their stomach all the way to their back and the hair comes off the back of their head. That's designed that way so when they're in the middle of a downpour it all runs right off of them. Tranquil, tranquilos, pasivos, tiernos, y lindos. I agree. Sloths are one of the favorites here at the zoo. It, we had to move them a couple of times here, and, and every time we'd move them, we'd, we'd always be getting questions about where our slots were. We did some renovations on an exhibit and then we, we finally decided to bring them over here which is a great spot for them. It's nice and quiet. It's a nice quiet part of the zoo. Where is this part of the zoo? This is in the tiny tot nature spot. And who is this that's on camera right now? This is Leona. Leona was hand raised by vet staff and, and keepers. We had a really good time with her because she was a baby. I actually was there when I actually was there with another keeper when, when she was born and we were very excited about it. <laughs> She's curious. <laughs> No, they haven't. Um, I believe Javari's already passed his prime, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Here's another fun fact considering uh, armadillos. That actually, armadillos can, uh, can, can swim. They can hold their breath for up to eight minutes. They fill their, their intestines and their stomach with air and they can float across streams or they can just hold their breath and, and, and cross uh, across on the, on the bottom to walk across. Leona is nine, and Javari had a birthday on Sunday. He turned 27, and they can live to up to 40 years in age. I believe right now the oldest sloth on record uh, is like 43. I just have to point out it is not easy to <laughs> be careful. <laughs> climbing a tree just to get a good. As I said earlier, you'll typically find Lynn's uh, two-toed slots real high in the canopy. Um, you very rare to see them. There are some rehabilitation places uh, in Central America and in South America. Costa Rica and, and Bolivia have some rehab places where they 
you'll bring injured sloths in and rehabilitate them and then uh, release them back into the wild. Be careful, cat. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Jessica. <laughs> I'm currently in a tree. <laughs> this is new. Well, they seem to be pretty excited. They hadn't had this much uh, <laughs> excitement in a while. Yes, they have. Well, actually, their hair their hair is very coarse. It's soft in some spots. It's coarse um, to keep the rain from penetrating and hitting their body. Uh, they are prone to nail breakage, especially the older sloths. Um, but uh, you know, they'll they'll grow back. It's keratin, um, but mainly in the older. Geriatric slots, uh, nail breakage can be uh, a problem. Jennifer would like to know if they ever get enrichment. They do, actually. Um, it usually consists of hanging banana leaves and uh, banana shoots. We'll dangle them from the top. Uh, sometimes we'll uh, take newspaper and roll it up. And uh, you know, use a, a scent on it to get them moving. Um, a lot of the enrichment is is more food oriented than anything else. How often do they sleep? They can sleep ten to sixteen hours a day. They usually spend the whole day sleeping. Uh, this is kind of unusual. I I had told them about this earlier, so they're cooperating with me today. But uh, they do spend anywhere from 10 to 16 hours sleeping. And that's usually during the day. Uh, they're most active during the night. Can they be fast if they need to be? Um, to a certain extent, um, they can move a lot faster in the trees than they can on land. But uh, I have seen them move quickly in the canopy. They are very clumsy on land, so not, not so much. So. When they do get on land, how do they move? Do they, they walk on their back legs? No, they use their front, actually, and they kind of waddle. <laughs> but, uh, Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I think you've already fallen asleep. Is he? When things get back to normal, come back and visit us and, and uh, come visit our slots and our armadillos. They sleep hanging on the trees. Sometimes, just, like just they, they love to, they'll sleep in the crook, in the fork of the tree, or they'll just hang, or sometimes they'll just sleep in the hammock. They've always got something attached that, they always have the, one of their arms attached to a limb though, just in case something happens, like breakage. <laughs> Oh, 
I think the main thing is keep on donating, <laughs> especially now. Your donations are greatly appreciated. Uh, we have a lot of critters to take care of, and uh, we're doing our best here to make sure that they are healthy and uh, they're getting proper nutrition. Well, I, once again, I'd like to thank everyone who's donated uh, and given me this opportunity to, to talk about our, our beautiful slots here at the San Antonio Zoo. Uh, we hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much.